Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome to this episode of Church in Your House. Ooh. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you for another glorious time we have to listen to you. Thank you for the word of life you have for us. We pray that you give us understanding by the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to continue our study of the cross, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know where we are now, uh, that we that have been packaged from above. It's about to be released on earth. We are talking of how the angel, angel Gabriel was sent to Mary. And we're looking at the word fever. Now at highly fever, the angel said to Mary, Today, let's look at verse 30 of Luke chapter 1. Verse 30 says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Uh, in the two previous episodes, I talked about favor. But there is another angle of favor I want to mention today. Favor. When you say somebody received favor from God, Many times, favor will not come wearing the uniform of uh, something attractive. No. It, it may not come in a way that will make you say, oh, this is beautiful. It's like wrapping a precious gift in an unattractive package. And that's how it is. So here, when... We're talking about Mary being highly favored. There are a lot of responsibility on the part of Mary for him, for her to enjoy that favor. It's not a favor that just uh, rolling in a platter of gold. To be the one that will be the mother of Jesus is not a small feat. Look at it. In the first place, she will get pregnant. Not with uh, the union of herself and, and the man she wanted to marry. So in that day, in those days, somebody like her, if you get married out of wedlock, uh, they will stone the fellow to death. So how is she going to explain that the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost impregnated her? Who will believe her? So you see the risk attached. A number of things that could happen. But by faith, he believed that whatever be the responsibility that follow the favor, God will give you ability to be able to handle it. And uh, we, we should understand it very well. Let, let me just give some examples so that we have, uh, we'll be able to grasp what I'm saying in a better form. Look at Ruth and Naomi. Uh, Ruth, we can say she was favored. She was highly favored. To be in the lineage of Jesus Christ, of David, of Jesus, and her name being not just written in the Bible, but controlling a book in the Bible, she was highly favored. But that favor did not come like a good thing to her. It wrapped itself with mystery. She got married, I would say to the right man, but the man died. The brother of the man she married again died. She was from an, an, an outsider, not a Jew. And it was not a good thing for her. You would have expected her to pack a load and leave and call her mother-in-law witch. But she didn't do that. She made up her mind to take care of that woman. And she said she will not leave that woman. She will serve the God of that woman and live where that woman lives. I believe that the responsibility attached to the favor that was prepared for her, she was able to go through it. A number of ladies who just have left and called that woman names. And we know the story how she followed her mother-in-law to her hometown. And one thing led to the other. Then she got married and gave birth to the person who gave birth, to the person who gave birth to 
David and from David to Jesus. And today, when you carry the Bible, root name is occupying a whole chapter, a whole book. Favor may not come with that regalia of attraction. But we must be able to see that, yeah, this is favor. Hallelujah. Something happened several years back. I schooled in a remote place, my elementary school. And my first teacher, that's primary one, the one who taught me in primary one, a very wonderful man. He happens to be a prince in the land. He had his own house. His firstborn was my friend. We were about the same age. And he had many other children. So after some years, you know, we grew past that, we scattered, everybody, you know, started struggling to move on in life. But several years later, something happened. The man, this same man, saw a mad woman that gave birth to a baby boy. And he went to take care of this mad woman and took that baby. But when I say mad woman, critically or chronically mad. If there's any, any degree in madness, you can say PhD in madness, ology, whatever be it. Living in the dumpster, naked. Or somebody somehow, whether for ritual purpose or so, impregnated the woman. And she went, gave birth to baby boy. But this teacher of mine went and began to take care of the baby. He took the baby and carried the woman for treatment. So the baby grew. His own children too grew. After many years, the children were all over, but they were just struggling, to, to, trying to take care of themselves. But this son from the mad woman, exile, traveled abroad, abroad, stayed in Germany, became big. As at that time, this my teacher had grown old. And in his old age, his house, the one he built by himself, collapsed. It was a mud house. So it was like, where will I stay? But his own real children were not in position to build him another house. What happened was, this son from the mad woman had in Germany and spent money that was enough to build another house, a modern house, for this my teacher. But the people he sent it to, they ate the money. Then he had, he prepared himself and traveled down to Nigeria with enough money and stay put, build a modern house for this man. I went to do crusade 30 years after, I went to do crusade in that same village. And I went to visit him in his new house. He gave me a bottle of uh, honey. So you understand what I'm talking about. Now, let's look at favor. The man is being cared for by the son from this mad woman. She's enjoying that favor. But when that favor came, it was not come, it didn't come with the uniform of goodness. You saw a mad woman, you saw a baby. So the favor will not tell you that. You, this is an opportunity for you that is favor for you in future. Take care of this person. No. Many times, favor will come with responsibility. And we must believe God to be able to catch in, to see it. Both Joseph and Mary, they had big responsibility in their hands to be the parents of Jesus. It's not just anybody that can be used to parent Jesus on planet Earth. But they saw it and they put in whatever it takes to face that responsibility and that favor appear to all. My wife and I, by the grace of God, we have opportunity to give a lot of people scholarship. But a number of such people could not face the responsibility. It was favor for them, just come. 
go to primary, secondary school free. And if you do well, university free. But some, when they, they step in, they will refuse. They, in fact, uh, we had a lot of list, long list of them. They refused to study. They just while away their time and uh, some will even abscond. So in that, you see, they received favor, but they could not cash in because they could not face the responsibility. So if we are praying for favor, we need to know that favor can come in any uniform. And you have to know that this is favor. Even if it's going to take your time, energy, money, running around, doing one thing or the other. Favor is a big responsibility. David had to face so much. He was highly favored. He was chosen in the midst of his brethren. An anointed king in the land. But there was heavy responsibility. He had to go through training to be fit for that position. Are you ready for that responsibility? Can God really, really, really pour down heavy favor on you? But heavy favor comes with heavy responsibility. If you shy away from responsibility, you can't enjoy the favor of God. The day you say yes to Jesus, you are the carrier of favor. All of us in Christ, we are highly favored. We, we, we carry the favor of, of God upon our life. Anywhere we go, we're highly favored. But we must equally know that it's, it's a big responsibility that is placed on us. We cannot just live anyhow. We can't live the way other people are living. We have to show that we belong to Christ. Our good work must appear to all. In the midst of this crooked world, we must distinct ourselves. We must shine our light. Everyone must see that we are different. Hallelujah. This is what I want to say. See, as we talk about the cross, it will be wrong if we just go, oh, Jesus was arrested, nailed on the cross, and uh, he died there, and then they buried him on the third day, he rose. Uh, no, 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 no. It's a storyline. We have to look at what led to what to la- and in the process, we'll be able to touch everything that has to do with us here. Practical life. You will see, by the time we are true, every part of human life will be touched. We will learn several things. And so today now, we're learning that sometimes favor will not come as uh, a favor, as something good, something attractive. It may first of all show forth in the form of responsibility, but it's big favor for you to have that responsibility because great reward is coming. It's like having an opportunity to invest in a lucrative business. You are not going to start by receiving profit. The beginning of it is investment. You're putting your money into it, putting your time and energy into it. But it's favor. So while you are doing all of that, you are, you, it's favor, favor, because a time we come, that investment will yield. And good money will be flowing back to you in return for your investment. So it will be wrong if you just think favor is when somebody comes and says, hey, take a car, take this house, uh, give this one. No, 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 no. It may not come that way. So it is my prayer for every one of us that we will not miss the opportunity for great favor in the name of Jesus. As you are praying for favor, pray that you won't miss the opportunity in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So please, if you have not said yes to Jesus, you know that's the beginning of favor, knowing him. Giving him your life is the beginning of favor. If you have not done so, don't let today pass by. In fact, wherever you are now, call on him. Ask him to forgive you your sin. And I'm persuaded he will do that. Willfully surrender your life to him. And make him your Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.